Good day, Flight Simmers. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Cub Crafters X Cub with floats. We're going to use the world map to do a flight plan. There's the plane. And we are going to enter um, the water departure by entering Charlie Alpha C8. And you can see that's Nanaimo Harbor Water Runway. So just select that as your. Just enter that. And we're going to select that as our departure. Okay, so we're in the water. Just going to back off here. It's nighttime here right now, but we're going to change that. I'm using my mouse to scroll here. We're going to Vancouver. I'm going to click on. Now, you got to get uh, right on the logo for. C V C Y V R. Click on that. Set that as your rival. Okay, so direct to right now GPS. We are going to go low altitudes, and we are going to select runway 13 for an ILS. And there's our flight plan. And we're going to hit fly. So you have to pick a water aerodrome um, if you want to actually take off in the water. Otherwise, you're, if you just pick a point of interest nearby an airport in the water, you'll start off in the air. So I'm going to hit ready to fly. There's our departure. Okay, so we're on the water. Now I'm going to bring the sun up here. Let's just get it up. Okay. Um, first thing I want to do is uh, bring your attention to, by pressing Control 1, this primary screen. Now, if I press uh, center, it's a touch screen. I, I see I'm on GPS, which is good. Then I'm going to click again. And I'm going to click flight plan. And I'm going to enter the frequency. And to get the frequency for that runway, you can go to flightplandatabase.com. Just Google search that. Type in the ICAO airport code for Vancouver, which is Charlie, Yankee, Victor, Romeo. And then look down here and you'll see the localizer ILS is 11110. So that's where I got that from. So we're going to enter this. There's your active frequency right now. We want to change that and hit transfer, not enter. Now I'm going to hit here again and go back to the map so you can see where we're sitting in the water here. The other thing I want to do is set our altitude at 3,000 feet. There we go. And over here I want to get the fuel, fuel mixture. I'm just going to put it on 75 roughly. It seems to work pretty good. And then the propeller RPMs, I don't want them on 100%. I'm going to set them around 75 too as well. The airport, the plane seems to fly pretty good on those settings. Now, I'm just going to go outside to make sure we're not running into the water here. Or uh, running into the shoreline rather. I'm just going to turn a bit. See, I'm turning in the direction we're going to be taking off for our flight plan anyway. So, have your throttle right back. Now, your um, rudders are up. You can put them down by pr pressing Control w on your keyboard. So make sure they're up. The other thing is your landing gear. Let's go inside. The landing gear just scroll down here. The landing gear is up. That's good. Now, well, let's go over here and turn on some lights if they're not on.
I'll turn those on. Avionics. Okay. Um, let's see what else. So here's your autopilot, flight director, your nav, your uh, vertical speed up and down, your altitude. Did we set that yet? Yes, we did. And uh, also the barometric pressure right here, right now, is reading 30. 0 0.08. So just press B, the letter B for Bravo on your keyboard, and we reset it to the proper barometric pressure. Now, oh, let's see what else. You know, there's your yoke, which we're going to control with the joystick. Logitech Extreme 3D, but any joystick's probably going to work quite nicely. There's another heading and altitude adjustment. sub-panel lighting so I mean that's about what we need to know to fly the plane just the basics without getting too complicated alright so we're gonna take off shortly here okay flaps are down so you don't wanna um, get too much of an angle of attack with this plane when you're taking off because it's uh, gonna stall on you so I'm going to gradually increase throttle using my joystick and uh, start to skip a little bit across the water. When it sort of levels off like that, just gently pull back. And you're going to take off. Now don't climb too quickly. I'm turning towards uh, my GPS on my compass up there in the top left corner of the screen. So there you go. She's chirping already because I'm getting my angle attacks up. Now I'm going to bring up the flaps and just gradually climb and try and follow that uh, compass heading there just to get my altitude up. And then I'm going to go inside the aircraft to show you how to set the autopilot so watch your speed and your angle of attack. So off we go towards Vancouver following our flight plan, hopefully. I'm using the Garmin GPS in this plane. So this plane's fairly small, so it's going to take a little while to do the flight. Faster than taking the ferry across from the but nevertheless, for a video, you can fast forward at any time you want towards Vancouver to see the landing. But there will be some stuff going on in between that we're going to probably have to correct. So I'm getting gears up for water landing there. So I don't have the gears down. So go down here and turn that off. It's very annoying. Okay, you can see we're flying here in our map. So now what I'm going to do is put on autopilot, I'm going to put on nav, I'm going to put on vertical speed, and we're going to have to climb. So you don't want to climb too quickly. Let me just show you. I just want to get, get it climbing. Yeah, yeah, you don't want it to be like up around the thousand. It's going to try and get it around 500 or something. It'll gradually climb. So right now we're around 400 and 400 feet per minute. So that's not bad because if you start climbing too aggressively, you're going to drop your speed and, and it's going to start nosing up to stall. So we're now getting close to our flight plan here. This aircraft should turn. So initially everything starts out just fine. Let's see what happens during the flight. And if we get a run amok, how we can get back on track again. So I'm going to show you the actual, I'm going to back off, show you something here. So I can drag this. So you see what's happened here? The, the original flight plan we created showed to here and then down in. But now we've got these USR points. So it's probably going to fly like that, I guess. 
or like this, one or the other, but I suspect probably around. Now these are just added by the programmers to smooth out the transition into the airport runway. They do add a lot of time, but sometimes if you try and cut them out and fly direct, which you can, uh, to this one, uh, this uh, Datsy. Let's just look at see now if I scroll down here. See, and I click on Datsy, and I say activate to that waypoint. Sometimes you can mess things up really bad. It's just not going to follow things up. It's better just to let it go its course. Right now it's climbing nicely and following the flight plan. So I'm going to go back to map. There. Okay, so we're back to normal. So I'm going to go back to map again. Alright, let's just see what happens here. See how we make out. Alright, I think... For now, it's just a matter of relaxing and watching the instruments. So we can see we've got the GPS on, the autopilot on, and the vertical speed still working to gain altitude at 400 feet per minute. Our waypoint is Triel. There's our bearing. Our distance is only 4.9 nautical miles, 4.5. Estimated time to get there is two and a half minutes. And our ground speed, there's our ground speed, and we're tracking, uh, it's our tracking bearings to 2 degrees, now back down to 1 degree. There's our calm frequency. So the settings I have are just, just automatically set that for. Um, the autopilot to take care of and, and deal with uh, switching calm frequencies. So we've got our fuel gauge, oil pressure, oil temperature. Now the reason why I cut back on throttle here, let's see what's on. Is that still on 100? I'm just going to cut. No, that's about there. Is is just to uh, keep. RPMs down into a reasonable um, amount. Just looking around here, see if there's anything else I can show you. Sometimes, if you open the door on these aircraft, especially that uh, De Havilland, people can't figure out how to get the door closed again. There's a little knob on the door which you can click on and the door opens well all you have to do to get it to close is take off in the aircraft and it will close automatically so I'm just adjusting the RPMs a bit again and there's my throttle and I'm controlling that with my uh, joystick I'm using the Logitech Extreme 3D which works Quite well, actually. All right, let's take a look at the front again. Okay, so I just want to see how we make out here, whether we're going to follow our flight plan or not. Now, it looks like it's going right up to that waypoint before it wants to turn. Now, let's see if it turns. So, yeah, it's turning right now. Well, let's see if it tracks okay. So now the flight plan, uh, this magenta line here, has become the active uh, flight plan to follow. So the aircraft should stay following that magenta line to the next waypoint, which is Nutby. That's 9.7 nautical miles, five minutes away. We'll just have to see how it does. Uh, uh, we mentioned the barometric pressure at the beginning. Just press B on your keyboard, see if it changed at all. It hasn't. So, 
we're at a stage where we're basically just want to look at our instruments and make sure everything's going okay. Like we've reached the right al altitude, so if we look down below, we'll see that uh, altitude is now on and holding, and the vertical speed went off. Outside and look at. Landing gear is up, the flaps are up. I didn't forget to do that for the flaps. So, this is beautiful British Columbia off the coast here in the Pacific Ocean. Sun coming up, beautiful day. Planes nicely uh, rendered. So, let's take a look at the pilot. And maybe flying the plane. Get a good look at the uh, X Cub. You can add your own tail information, which I did in the settings. And the mountains look beautiful, gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful flight. Actually, taking the ferry across from the Nanaimo to Vancouver is quite a nice experience, too. You'll, you'll see some really nice green lights in the water along the way. And the is quite nice. The ride on is pretty good size, takes a lot of vehicles, has a nice cafeteria. Alrighty, let's see how we're doing inside. You can see up here we're falling at flight plane. We haven't gone off track. There's our speed which looks good. So I'm just gonna back off with my mouse a bit and then just take a look at how we're doing. Alright, we're doing okay so far. I'm just going to zoom in here, get some of the glare from the sun off. Oh, we got two, two and a half minutes to get there. So, we got lots of fuel. Nice to have some of these little uh, information points put along the bottom of your screen and your settings. You can do that so that if you're not actually looking at uh, the fuel, you can see it. Angle of attack. If, it's, if you're uh, scrolled away from it, you can still see what's going on as you look around. Let's look out the window on the side. Okay airport over there. See the lights flashing. That might be the one where we took off from. And I'm all not sure. And we we'll look out this way. We got some information here. Maximum demonst uh, demonstrated crosswind 11 knots. Oh, there's carb heat button. There's your battery, alternator, magneto, magneto, fuel switch pump. So a lot of this stuff is just done for you automatically. So and your transponder here you got the 6107 ALT that's calculated for you. Uh, you don't have to do that calculation yourself. If you uh, have your settings set up to automatically do that. You don't have to worry about it. Same with the call, of course. The audio is being looked after by the uh, co-pilot, which we don't really have on the plane, but it's in the settings, so you don't have to deal with that. It makes you know, life a little simpler. You can just concentrate on flying the plane. And we need to clean that window when we get to Vancouver. scroll around the plane. Now, let's have a look and see what's going on here. Okay, now let's have a look at our see. Okay, so we're going, we hit B and we're now going off track. So, why that happens, I'm not sure. 
but it's probably a little bug in the system. Um, but there is a way to get it back on track. And I've noticed this happen with the um, some of the other aircraft in the system as well. So what you need to do when, when that happens, I'm just going to zoom in a bit here, is you need to go down here, leave it on autopilot, but turn heading on, and then use your heading bug to get the plane going back again on track. So I'm just going to back off a bit here. So I'm going to try and just uh, use the autopilot and the heading. So the nav went off when I switched on the heading. So we're just going to try and fly back here and see what happens doing this. So this is really where it should be following. And it was doing just fine, as you noticed. But I find sometimes it loses its uh, way. I think the Grand Caravan uh, also does that. Has a habit of doing that. So. so you can just control things here. I'm going to zoom in a bit. If you're not as close as you think you are. So once I get back on track again here, I think this was one of our waypoints here. Wow, look at this. Yeah. Okay. No big deal. Okay, so now I have to uh, turn again, get her back on track. So I'm going to fly to here and then see if this thing will pick up where it should be going. So I'm just going to use the autopilot and the heading to stay on track. See if I can get that right on the line, the gentle line. You can see if the bar is over here, you want to fly in that direction to get back on track. So now it's changed the heading up here, autopilot altitude holding at 3000. So everything's working pretty good except um, the nav system kind of lost its way. using the heading bug here. Okay, so now it looks like it just picked up the next waypoint on its own. You notice how it switched there? But the arrow's pointing in a crazy direction, so I think we'll just fly over to here. See what happens. I'm just going to fly over to this magenta line and see if we can uh, pick up. I'll switch to nav when we get there, see what happens. I mean, this was supposed to be our next waypoint, and then we fly into the airport. But these, all these extra ones were added. So, Looks like it's trying to fly from there up to here. Well, I'm going 
to see if I can uh, fly down this way. To this waypoint right here and hit nav and see what happens. See if it picks up the localizer. If that happens, then we can cut out that great big loop that they've added. So, zoom in for accuracy. I'm going to hit nav now. Looks like uh, it's navigating now and it's going back to this waypoint. Let's hit approach. See what happens. There, picked up the localizer when I hit approach. Okay, if I hadn't left it on nav, it was going to fly all the way up and around up here. But we were close enough that if I hit approach, it went for the localizer. So let's see what happens. It should come around and pick up this line. So the nav is off, the approach is on. So that's one way to avoid those user points. Just see what happens here. I'm going to back off. Okay, so there's the airport. Let's see if it lines up. So this, this should come perfectly in line if it's tracking okay. Looks like we're descending. So, let me just see. So it picked up the glide slope. Now the problem is we're descending way out here. So we're probably going to end up coming up short of the runway. So I'm just going to show you how to keep an eye on that and take it off autopilot to land it. So we want to uh, Get our landing gear down. And our flaps. So we're descending kind of quickly, quite a ways back, but we've really lined up nicely with the runway. So, you know, it is working. And the glide slope has been picked up. But my only concern is uh, this is a water aircraft and it may try and land in the water short of the runway. So I'll just keep an eye on it.
take it off. Uh, if it looks like it's too low, I just take it off while the pilot and give it some throttle. Keep the speed up and see if I can land on the runway. Once you get close, you'll you'll kind of get a feeling whether you're getting too low. And I'm going to press B uh, on the keyboard for the barometric pressure again, just to double check on that. Okay, so that's one way you can get around that big loop for approach. Just use your heading to fly directly to that waypoint, and then hit approach. See if you pick up the localizer because that frequency we enter is coming off the runway and the plane will start flying there if you put it back on that. Okay, so I'm keeping an eye on my altitude here. That's the most important thing. I'm going to let it get close and I'm going to take it off autopilot. Now I have uh, keystrokes programmed into my joystick for the air traffic control tower, the autopilot, the approach button, the um, button for um, reverse thrust, auto throttle, spoiler. So some of those things this plane doesn't have. So far it doesn't look too bad, this uh, descent. I'm a little concerned we might come up shorter than that. And of course we got the sun in our eyes, glaring things. So let's just take a look at the front here. Yeah, well, geez, that don't look too bad so far. Sometimes you can't tell the last minute you're coming up short, but for some reason this doesn't look too bad. 500. 500 feet, eh? Well, that's getting a little low. Okay, so I'm taking it off auto, autopilot shortly. Uh, I just want to see if it is coming up short, so you'll see. Actually, it doesn't look like it's going to. It looks like it's working, but it, if you think you're too low, just take it off autopilot and land it yourself. But, uh, I'm going to take it off autopilot now. Okay, you can see that it reacted immediately, but I'm just going to cut the speed back. It might have been coming in a little bit low. See those uh, two white things? Two white little lights on the left there on the runway are showing me I'm a little high. So I've cut back to idle now. And I'm going to try and set this down nice and gentle. Be careful when you get down this if you, with your um, yoke, this thing will wander. So bring it down ever so gently. Gears down for runway landing. Yeah, we got our gears down. Okay. Alright, see what I mean? It does tend to swerve. But it breaks well. It flops up. Alrighty. All's well that ends well. I'm going to turn off the runway right here. And contact ATC. So if we had gone on headings autopilot, we would we we had lost our way there. That was one way to get ourselves back on track. So it happens with other aircraft, not just this one. But this one flies pretty good. You know the Cub Crafters X really does uh, fly well. It's a little slow, but it's a fun plane to fly. So there we go. Taking off from water, then landing on a runway. Uh, make sure your rudders are up, of course. And your landing gear down. And let's just contact them and, see, and just ask. Ground services, see if we can... Uh... Okay, go back. There's nothing really. They're, they're not giving us... Uh, not giving us a taxi to the gates or anything. Lots of the aircraft you'll get a taxi. You can go to ground services and you can get taxi to the gates. Oh man, this thing does swerve. 
I'm just going to go over here and park myself anyway. Hey, okay, real fun plane to fly anyway. You can see that. So thank you very much for joining me on this flight from Nanaimo to Vancouver Airport. And I hope you got something out of this video and enjoyed the flight. Just pull up beside this plane right here. Looks like that is a Beechcraft King Air. Beautiful. Eight million dollars. A little more expensive than our plane. Yes. Okay, but we got our passenger here safely. And that concludes our flight. Thank you very much for joining me.